and, the, and cause the heavens to shake for our good and his name's glory. At this time, the deacons will come forward and collect our offering. Will you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, we are in, we should ought be in such great thankfulness for the many blessings that you caused to be brought unto us throughout our lives. For we know that you cause it to rain upon both the, the good and the evil. And we pray that in the course of thy blessings, our hearts may be uh, turned to being those who are good. We do ask thy continued blessing upon thy people, that we might continue to prosper, that we might continue to be allowed to serve thee in the building of thy kingdom. Lord, we would ask thy blessing upon those gifts collected today, and the blessing of those responsible for their dispersion, that all things might be done according to um, that which would please thee. In Jesus' name I ask it, amen. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. It's another beautiful day that the Lord has made, and we should be glad in it. And appreciate very much the beautiful ministry of music that Connie brought to us this morning. Helps to uh, usher in the spirit in this place, and, and then to Carol and her prelude. I was sitting out waiting to come in and heard the, the music, and. <clears throat> Had to take another look at the the order of worship. It sounded, I thought, maybe it was Christina that was playing. <clears throat> we <clears throat> assemble here this morning before the table of our Lord as one body. <clears throat> no one is greater or more important. <clears throat> we are, we all are equal. We are members of the body of Christ, Christ Church, and we depend on him for our nourishment. <clears throat> Without Christ, <clears throat> we would die, both physically and spiritually. <clears throat> Jesus said, I am the bread of life. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. <clears throat> but I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Jesus instituted <clears throat> the ordinance of the Lord's Supper on the night of his betrayal. He knew that soon he would have to leave his disciples. 
After they had eaten the Passover meal, Jesus took bread and wine and blessed it and passed it among them. Over the bread, he told them, take it and eat. Behold, this is for you to do in remembrance of my body. For as oft as ye do this, you will remember this hour that I was with you. And over the wine he said, this is in remembrance of my blood, which is shed for many. And the New Testament, which I give unto you, for of me ye shall bear record unto all the world. Evan Fry, he's the author of uh, the Restoration Faith, he had some good words about this ordinance. The bread of life which came down from heaven was not Jesus' body, but his spirit. The spirit is the real personality. It is he himself, his life, his nature. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. <clears throat> when men are born again of water and of the spirit, when they have become an integral, functioning part of the body of Christ's body, then they begin to partake of this spiritual food, this new life which is in the body. An important part of the communion is unity. There must be unity of faith, unity of, in the covenant relationship with Christ, unity with each other. Anything that separates any member from any other member or any of us from Christ is a hindrance to the proper partaking of the communion meal. Those who approach the altar of God must be sure that they have nothing against any brother and that no brother has aught against them. There must be true repentance for sin and restitution where wrong has been done, where there can be no peace and union between member and member or between member and Christ. The communion is a memorial meal observed in remembrance of the sacrifice of our Lord for us. In remembrance of his body and blood, in remembrance of the covenant which we have made with him, in remembrance of the unity which exists between the members of Christ's church and the unity we have with him. Through this ordinance, we eat of the bread of heaven, which is the spirit, the personality of Christ, drawing our nourishment from, from his body as we abide in him and function with him and he through us to accomplish the tasks and the purposes of his kingdom. Sounds like a lot to remember. Yet if we <clears throat> adhere to the words imprinted on the table before us, we will accomplish what is needed. This do in remembrance of me. What will you remember of Jesus this day, this hour? Will you remember his love? Will you hear again his voice saying, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Will you remember Jesus saying, Ask, and ye shall receive. Seek, and ye shall find. 
Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Do you remember Jesus performing many miracles? Do you remember Jesus in his work of healing? Do you remember Jesus weeping over Jerusalem or over a loved one dead? This sacrament of the Lord's Supper is an expression of his love and he desires that no one be lost. As I was preparing for this morning, a hymn, keep coming, kept coming to me. And I'll just share it to you, read it for you. It's one most familiar, it's 116. O oh, love that wilt not let me go, I rest my weary soul in thee. I give thee back the life I owe, that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer, fuller be. O light that followest all my way, I yield my flickering torch to thee. My heart restores its borrowed ray, that in thy sunshine's blaze its day may brighter, fairer be. O joy that seekest me through pain, I cannot close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow through the rain and feel the promise is not vain, that morn shall tearless be. O cross that liftest up my head, I dare not ask to fly from thee. I lay in dust, life's glory, dead, and from the ground their blossoms red, life that shall endless be. You could not partake of the sacrament today and not remember the Lord, the Lord's love. <clears throat> Will you remember his forgiveness? Will you remember what he said when he was crucified? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Perhaps you will remember Jesus telling the parable of the prodigal son. Maybe you will remember Jesus restoring Peter back into his fellowship after Peter had denied him three times. And surely you will remember Jesus telling his disciples in his Sermon on the Mount, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, who trespass against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you your trespasses. <laughs> will you remember Jesus' determination to do his Father's will? He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Will you remember how he sweat, as it were, great drops of blood in the garden, then allowed himself to be taken? You may even remember Jesus speaking with the Samaritan woman at the well. His disciples saw him speaking with her and marveled. After she had gone, his disciples tried to get him to eat something. Jesus answered and said, I have meat to eat that you know not of. My meat is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. In that day, the Jews despised the Samaritans but they too were of the house of Israel. Jesus was sent to the house of Israel. 
And Jesus spent two days with them, and many believed. Will you remember how important it was for Jesus to pray to his Father in heaven? Will you remember that he taught his disciples to pray? Jesus needed assurance from heaven. Jesus needed help choosing the twelve. He sought the quiet places to talk with God. And he also prayed vocally. We remember that he prayed with the people when he visited ancient America. So great and marvelous were the words which he prayed that they cannot be written, neither can they be uttered by man. Can we not see the importance of attending prayer service? Will you remember the victory in Christ? We remember that the grave could not hold him because he was without sin. He rose from the dead and lives. All power is given him. Perhaps you will remember the conversion of Saul and also Alma the son and the four sons of Mosiah. They had persecuted Christ's church and were vile sinners. They received the gospel of Christ and were changed. The same victory can be ours today. There is no other way but through Christ. And we remember what Jesus told his disciples after they went out unto the Mount of Olives, the night he instituted the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. He told them, all ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. And he did. He showed himself to them, not just once, but several times. He is true to his words. The victory is in Christ. We must be one with Christ and one with another. And with the passing of President Larson, the church must be strong together and seeking only our Lord's will. As we reach forth to partake of the emblems this morning, let us do so affirming our covenant to keep his commandments. I'd like to close with two, two scriptures. The first one is, is from the Book of Mormon. And it is uh, Jesus telling the people there what his gospel is. Behold, I have given unto you my gospel, and this is the gospel which I have given unto you, that I came into the world to do the will of my Father, because my Father sent me. And my Father sent me that I might be lifted up upon the cross. And after that I had been lifted up upon the cross, I might draw all men unto me. That as I have been lifted up by men, even so should men be lifted up by the Father to stand before me, to be judged of their works, whether they be good or whether they be evil. And for this cause have I been lifted up. Therefore, according to the power of the Father, I will draw all men unto me, that they may be judged according to their works. And it shall come to pass that whoso repenteth and is baptized in my name shall be filled. And if he endureth to the end, behold, him will I hold guiltless before my Father at that day when I shall stand to judge the world. And he that endureth not in
to the end, the same is he that is also hewn down and cast into the fire, from whence they can no more return, because of the justice of the Father. And this is the word which he hath given unto the children of men. And for this cause he fulfilleth the words which he hath given, and he lieth not, but fulfilleth all his words, and no unclean thing can enter into his kingdom. Therefore nothing entereth, in, entereth into his rest, save it be those who have washed their garments in my blood, because of their faith and the repentance of all their sins and their faithfulness unto the end. Now this is the commandment, repent all the ends of the earth and come unto me and be baptized in my name, that ye may be sanctified by the reception of the Holy Ghost, that ye may stand spotless before me at the last day. Verily, verily I say unto you, this is my gospel, and ye know the things that ye must do in my church. For the works which ye have seen me do, that shall ye also do. For that which ye have seen me do, even that shall ye do. Therefore, if ye do these things, blessed are ye, for ye shall be lifted up at the last day. And the last scripture uh, is taken from uh, Latter-day Revelation from R158, 5C. Be not discouraged, my remnant flock, for my work will never be thwarted. Lay aside those things that cause aught with your brothers and sisters, and live in the light and joy of the gospel. Determine what must matter most in your individual lives, loving and relying upon God, the Father, for all things good, caring for your families both in and out of the church, and finding security in the redemptive power of the cross and through the atonement of the only begotten Son of God. These things are most precious and should cause you to always be of good cheer looking upward for that glorious day of the Lord's return. For then you shall all see eye to eye and be one with each other and with the Father and the Son. May it be so. Amen.
As members of the Remnant Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we are practicing close communionists. However, all who claim authoritative baptism and have not departed from original reorganized church doctrine are invited to participate in this ordinance. We welcome visitors among us and invite you to seek further information about our faith and our doctrine. Shall we uh, kneel as Elder Alex Van Cannon offers the prayer of blessing on the bread? O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen.
as Patriarch Carl von Cannon Jr. offers the prayer of blessing over the wine, let us kneel as much as possible. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen.
Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful for the Spirit that has been here in this hour. We are thankful for the life of thy Son and for his willingness to come and that you sent him on our behalves, a uh, debt that we can never repay, yet we will give thee all. And we ask thy blessing and guidance in so doing, that you may be able to call us thy own. Would you bless us as we depart from here, from this place, and go with us and keep us in thy ways. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen.